Hi, uh, welcome to this session of uh, discussion with the expert. And we have uh, Dr. Vivek Mundada, who is a consultant pediatric neurologist. He is coming in the show for the second time. So uh, he has trained in India as well as uh, UK. He worked in Cambridge and London for a few years before he moved on to Dubai. And now we, have, we are lucky to have him at Medcare uh, Children and Women's Hospital and uh, at the Aster Hospital as well. So today he will be discussing with us about uh, headache in children, which is again a, a anxiety provoking topic in uh, many parents. Uh, Dr. Vivek, uh, well, thank you for coming. Thank you, my pleasure, Dr. Sridhar. Thank you. I mean, uh, can I uh, request you to address this important topic with the parents as to what causes headache in children when a pediatrician should be referring to the neurologist apart from the ophthalmology review and things but when should we be worried first of all i mean a tumor is always in the background of the parents worry and and uh, just to give the background just to talk on all these questions which you were just asking we used to do a whole day course on this headache you know addressing all these questions so there's plenty to talk on but i'll just try to go through and uh, feel free to stop me and ask questions as i'm uh, proceeding so uh, in my clinical practice, this is one of the most common thing which I come across. More so in this COVID lockdown period, what we call it as, I've seen many children coming with new onset headaches. And I'll, I'll just briefly go through what they are, you know, when we need to get worried and all. So even if we, because many parents are perplexed and they ask, oh, can my child also get migraine? But even children can get headaches. So that's nothing kind of unusual. There is a significant school absence. There is something called quality of life. We all neurologists are fascinated about that. And I'm just addressing this issue because the quality of life is worse in the children with headache. If you, even if you compare the quality of life with the asthma or diabetes, so imagine the burden which we have. Despite that, I feel that there is a low referral rate to the specialist because we believe headache is headache, you know, just give paracetamol and roof and that, that's all gone. But I'll just try to explain the different types of headaches and you can then figure out probably, you know, how complex this topic is. We, even when we talk about the serious type of headache, which come through the door of our emergency department, let's say that fill up about 1% of attendance uh, among the children. Most of them are you know, almost half of them are due to viral illness or minor head trauma, kind of this thing. 20% we call it as primary headache. And I'm talking about the emergency admission, not in the OPD, which I'm seeing. So the primary headache and rest are secondary. Now, let, let me just go through what is the primary and secondary before I come to the important question you said, you know, tumor and the warning signs and those things. So primary is there is no reason behind it. So if I do any investigation, let's say MRI, EEG, whatsoever, it's going to be normal because there's absolutely no reason. Of course, the what happens in the body is a com bit complex. So I'm not going to go through that. But as the second, imagine you have a toothache or if you have sinus and you have the headache because of that. So there is often something on the background which is causing the headache. So these are the secondary headache. There is an international body and the society is called International Headache Society, IHS. And they have classified the headache. The last revision was uh, just two years before, two, three years before. And it's open to view for all the people. And I often like to show this website to the parents. The only reason being, even though I said primary and secondary headache, there are multiple subtypes and subtypes and subtypes. So if you go through the website, there will be probably more than 200 different types of headaches that we see. And it's such enormous, so such a thing. When it comes to primary headache, the most common, and everybody might have heard these names, migraine, tension type headache. So these are the headaches. Again, as I said, we often don't do any neuroimaging like MRI or any investigation, but it's very important to get the detailed history to know, is it this type of primary headache or that type of primary headache? And as you can imagine, there is no reason behind it. So it's dependent on the history, the characteristics of the headache. So we use, we often ask a lot of questions, you know, related to the headache. The person who suffers the headache is able to tell you about the headache, not the parent. So you can imagine in children, it's sometimes it's very tricky to get the accurate detail, you know, and to figure out what type of headache it is. Most often, and 
thanks to the technology these days, we have the apps like Migraine Buddy and all, where you can record the details of the headache. And that sometimes can help us. So it may take some few visits for us to come to conclusion, does it look like a migraine or does it look like, because of course, the treatment depends on this um, uh, accurate categorization of these headaches. So as I said, the most common type of the primary headache is the tension type headache. And then we see as a migraine, which is not uncommon in children, we often see. And there's a whole lot of list for secondary headache, which I'm not, I don't want to go through because as I said the most common we see is a primary headache. Only one thing I would say in terms of the secondary headache, as you correctly said, when I'm sitting in front of the parents, the big elephant in the room is, does my child have any tumor in the brain? You know, will he be doing any scan? And I think that's the biggest anxiety, although it's not uh, spoken uh, directly, but I can sense that of course the parents feel, uh, you know, something wrong in the child's brain. But uh, there was a nice study in Hull in uh, Northern England uh, done by a headache expert in a big headache clinic. What they did is they took out the data of more than 100 children with headache and only three children among them had this tumor. Other thing is almost all children, we could figure out there is something wrong in the brain and we need to do MRI just based on the history and examination. If you have tumor, let's say, only one third of the time you'll get the headache. So there are different things you can see on the examination, on the history, which makes you suspect, hang on, this is not like a primary headache, this is like a secondary headache and I need to do MRI. And that's where the history and examination plays a vital role in terms of investigation and to decide whether any MRI is needed or any other investigation is needed. Let me come to the migraine because again, this is, uh, the severe type of primary headache, more severe than the uh, tension type headache, what we call it as. Those who suffer from the migraine can uh, know what I'm saying. This is, it's most one of the severe types and it's disabling. I imagine the children, those who are you know, sleeping in a quiet and a dark room because often the migraine is headache, um, uh, it disables you so much that you know you tend to avoid the light or the loud noises. Even the movement can make it worse and the headache is moderate to severe in nature. Sometimes on the one hand, one side of the head, but in children you can have on the both sides. And that's why the children are forced to sleep. As opposed to the tension type headache, which is slightly milder quality of headache, but we often call it as characterless headache, which means um, you know there is no associated feature like vomiting and nausea, like we see in migraine. So they are just dull headache where children can often go around and you know, do their duties. Often. Um, all these headaches, most of the migraine and tension type headaches or primary headache have certain trigger. If you carefully ask those questions, they often we find uh, there are triggers and often things like sleep and diet and lack of exercise or exertion, uh, anxiety, one of the most common thing is uh, something we often find. An important question, when I take the history from these children, I ask, okay, uh, how much do you sleep? Is the sleep regular? Because as you know, the circadian rhythm and all, we need regularity in terms of our sleep. So if you have inadequate sleep, even you and me will face, you know, dull headache in the next day. That's very important. Then the next is the six meals. You need to eat on time because again, starvation, skipping the meal will often cause these headaches. One of the commonest thing which I've found in, especially in Dubai is inadequate drinking dehydration, uh, especially in the summer these days, children need to drink well. They go to school just with one water bottle, often the bottle comes, uh, you know, the same, or they just drink very little and scanty. This is very important to hydrate the body in able to avoid this. Screen time, very important and often asked question to me in the clinic, you know, how much is the screen time? I can give the ideal answer, but unfortunately we are forced to use the screen time, of course, in these days, uh, when your school is online and all, but I would advise, taking enough break in between and you know, make sure that the child is not strained with the eyes at all. And exercise, of course, with the children can't go outside these days, but often the exercise can reduce the amount of the anxiety and tension type headaches. Even the migraine, it's very important to uh, do the exercise. So this is more, most often the common association and accordingly we manage because often we find the trigger like anxiety or anything, we try to correct, not just giving the painkillers for the headache, but it's a lifestyle modification, what we call, 
to relieve these episodes and get the frequency and severity down for this. What age group are we looking at when we speak of migraine or tension headache? What is the earliest stage you can get them? I think uh, I feel that it occurs, I mean, uh, the lowest I've seen is uh, four or five years, of course, not here in UK. But it's very tricky to diagnose these, you know, it's more observation based how the child is behaving because he's not going to tell what quality of headache it is, pounding headache, thrusting headache or, you know, dull headache. It's mostly observation based and it's a bit tricky. So it may not be accurate in this age group, in the toddlers and young age group. But, you know, as I completely, uh, as I said, if the child is still bending, even though he's saying I've got a headache, mild nature, if the child is forced to sleeping and, you know, not doing anything, and just go away, let me sleep, and it's so bad, it's crying with pain. So that's how we uh, figure out the vomiting part, of course, is mostly associated with migraine headache. Family history as well, no? Family history, yeah, we see that more often in migraine because tension type headache anybody can have, but uh, uh, even nowadays we do genetic in certain categories of migraine, like, you know, hemiplegic migraine, they're very genetic. But yeah, one of the things is uh, it has a genetic predisposition, especially the migraine type of headache and certain characteristic migraines. Something you wanted to display on the screen, uh, share the screen. Sure, yeah. I, I just wanted to show, and this is something I show to the parents as well, because they ask, okay, what are the things we need to look for um, if my child has a headache? Is it something, the warning signs? And I find this extremely useful. This is from one of the websites called HeadSmart. I'll just share my screen and uh, explain what this is. Sure, that will be very helpful. <clears throat> so, uh, I hope you can see my screen now. Yeah, I can. So these are the warning signs, uh, especially for the secondary headache. So any headache, which I don't think is a primary headache, and if you have all these things, the children need to present to emergency or immediately see the specialist. So I'll just explain what this is. In the baby's younger age group, especially the persistent or recurrent vomiting, and this is uh, again distributed among all these categories. Any issues with your balance or walking problem if the child is wobbly with these episodes. Eye movements is very important. If you have any wobbly eyes or suspect a loss of vision, sudden behavioral change, the child is behaving, you know, something strange suddenly, especially the lethargy, any seizures, of course, goes needless to say, needs to be attended. Uh, not the febrile seizure, but uh, a febrile seizure, especially with the headaches, it has to be attended in emergency. Any abnormal head position, like, you know, wry neck or head tilt or stiff neck in the younger children. Uh, the head circumference if it is increasing. That just indicates there's something wrong inside, which in this case, the child will need urgent uh, scan. In school going children, again, the recurrent or persistent headache, or vomiting, same balance and coordination issues, eyes problem, any double vision, loss of vision. Again, in them, behavioral changes, seizures. Older children, similar issues. As you can see, most of these signs are you know, distributed in all ages. Um, but most importantly, if you have anything associated with headache apart from you know, migraine sign, it is important to rule out that they are not secondary headache. And these are the children I would see urgently. Uh, in these age groups. So these are things I would uh, give it to the parents to just make sure that, you know, they're we're not missing anything else. Thank you. So I think if you stop sharing the screen, I think we can. Sure. <clears throat> okay. That's good. Uh, I think it was a very helpful session. And I mean, obviously, uh, a lot, lot to learn for pediatricians as well. And uh, the last slide you showed is really helpful and will definitely guide families on when to seek help and for us to know when to refer to you. So uh, thank you, uh, Dr. Vivek, uh, for this time. And it was very helpful. Sorry, I think you were getting an emergency call in the middle. Hope it's okay to have. No, that's fine. <laughs> I'll answer. So, uh, thank you very much. For time. Thank you so much. I really enjoyed it. Thank you. My pleasure. Thank you. And again, if you have any questions or comments, uh, please put in the comment section and uh, we will uh, get back to you. And uh, I'm sure this will be helpful to most parents. So do subscribe and share. Thank you.